Welcome YouTubers, it's Platt here, and today I'm going to show you how to make a simple hard apple cider. So let's go! I would like to start off with clearing up some technical terms that we'll use. Today what we're producing is a hard apple cider. And when you go to the grocery store you might see apple cider or apple juice. Apple juice is just regular filtered juice from an apple. Apple cider is unfiltered juice from those apples. Hard apple cider is when we take apple cider and then we ferment it. If you take fermented apple cider and allow it to sour, that becomes apple cider vinegar. And then if we take that fermented apple cider and then distill it, that becomes apple brandy or calvados. But today we're making hard apple cider. So let's see what we need. This is what we'll need to produce our hard apple cider. First, a gallon of apple cider. Now the apple ciders you buy at grocery stores are pasteurized. But if you live near an orchard, I suggest getting the unpasteurized real thing. Second is our yeast. If you remember our making booze video, we used regular old bread yeast. This time I made the trip to the homebrew shop and I bought some wine yeast, which will produce a cleaner fermentation. And then lastly, I have an airlock. If you remember again from the making booze video, we just left the cap loose to allow the CO2 to escape. But I find that this airlock allows you to visually check up on the progress of fermentation a little bit easier. Well, now that we got everything, it's time to go. What we're going to do is we're going to crack this open and going to pour out a little bit like we did with the making booze video. Yeah, a little more. There we go. We'll put the lid back on. Now this time we're not going to put sugar in like we did in the making booze video because it's unfiltered and we have all these apple particles on the bottom. So we're just going to give it a good little shake to get that all stirred up and then we're going to take our yeast packet and most of these yeast packets you buy at your homebrew shops are good for five gallon batches so uh, we're just going to use probably about a third to half of that package cut her open here and we're going to sprinkle her in All right, yeah, maybe a little more. That's good. Now what I like about using these containers to ferment in is because when we buy them, they're already sterilized and clean, so that saves a step in, in uh, cleaning equipment. Now in future episodes, I'll go over the importance of sanitation, but these simpler projects don't need as much sanitation. Next, we're going to put in our airlock. We've got the little rubber knob stopper here. We'll push her down. We're going to open the top here. And I'll give you another little sanitation clue. Instead of putting water in here like most people do, I'm going to put a little bit of vodka. And that helps keep creepy crawlies, other microorganisms, from coming down. So we'll... Fill that up till we get a little floatage. Alright, that should be good. We'll put that on top. There we go. And now we'll set. We'll let the yeast work their way down. And in probably a day or so you should see bubbles start coming up. It's been about a day or so. And you can see our fermentation is going full steam ahead. Boy, that's some high quality CO2 we're producing there. And that CO2 is working its way up to our airlock, which we can watch bubble up here. There we go. Man, I could watch that all day. Who needs a TV? Well, the fermentation will go strong like this for about a week. But we'll leave it in the container for another week to allow it to, the yeast and the apple particulate to settle down. So in about two weeks, we'll have our 
apple cider ready to go. Now, as in our making booze video, I suggest that we pour off the, uh, the sediment off the bottom. But I'll add another step to it and suggest that you either pour through cheesecloth or a coffee filter. After you've done that, let it sit in the fridge for a couple of days and she'll be ready to serve. Now what our final product will be is what's called still apple cider, which means there'll be no bubbles. In a future video, I'll discuss about how we bottle beer, but at the same time kind of cover about how you would carbonate anything you wanted to bottle. This particular cider, because we're using a wine yeast, will come out dry and crisp. If you're expecting a sweet beverage, that's not going to be this, but it's a perfect wintertime beverage. Well, we have a hard cider working right now, and I can't wait to drink it. Besides learning how to make hard apple cider, what else did we learn today? Well, first, we learned what an airlock was and why we use them. And two, we learned that the better the yeast, the better the finished product. Well, I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please subscribe down below. And that you can always follow me at Platt's Booze Blog at Twitter, and also the blog itself, platt'sboozeblog.blogspot.com. Until next time, bye-bye.